Okay, and um, we're ready to begin. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, good morning. Uh, I'm the chair of, of this particular meeting. My name is Councillor Danny Scott, and I think would the other um, panels like to introduce themselves so as we all know who we are, please? Hi, I'm Councillor Paul Wilshaw. Councillor David O'Hara. Uh, good morning, Chair and Members. My name is Mark Marshall. I'm representing Mr Huckabee, who's with me to my left. Hello. Uh, good morning. Um, I think the procedure for this morning is going to be we will allow you, uh, if it's okay with you, sir, uh, 20 minutes to put your case across. And then uh, the panel will have a, any questions if they, if they wish, followed by the objector, who will also have uh, the courtesy of 20 minutes. And we will take the rest of the, uh, the session as it comes, if that's okay with you, sir. Welcome. To, thank you, Chair. Yes, that's more than adequate. Thank you. Lovely. If, if, you, if you would like to start off, then, then please, uh, Mr. Marshall. Sorry, Chair. Just first, can we just do the declarations, please? Just see if any, any members have any declarations of interest. No. All right. All right. No, no declarations of interest. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Marshall, all yours. Uh, good morning, Chair and members. Um, I'm just going to start with a short introduction of uh, the company that sits behind this application. As I've already uh, suggested, Mr. Huckabee sat to my left. He's um, been a budding entrepreneur all his life. Uh, started in business at the age of 16, went to university uh, and graduated in, with business studies. In 2008, he started working for a high-level marketing company. In 2009, he started an event business coordinating um, uh, events at Sunuk Syndicate and Revolution, all uh, fairly high profile venues in Blackpool, some of which have now obviously fallen by the wayside. In 2012, he worked with Cuff and Taylor on the Living Festival and Blackpool Rocks, uh, which again have been held at very high profile venues, including the Tower, the Winter Guards, North Pier. He's got a lot of experience as well uh, with smaller clubs um, and bars, those being Truth in Poulton in 2017. 2018, he started Marvin's in Poulton. In 2019, he began Marvin's uh, in Lytham. Um, he enjoys the confidence of two business partners, Graham Barr and another individual who assists with the finance uh, named Adrian. I'm just going to touch on Mr. Barr very quickly. He's got a lot of experience within project management uh, and the construction industry, very well connected with all sort of competent trades uh, and the particular project under scrutiny is going to be uh, conducted by a main contractor if the license is issued called SSL contractors. So very reputable people behind this application, Chair. Um, I'm not going to regurgitate the documentation that's already been submitted by as You've already had that. Uh, I hope I've dealt with it in uh, a polite and courteous way. That was always the intention to certainly not cause any upset uh, to the people who've offered objections. Uh, and we wanted to make the uh, case very clear that we're taking the objections of the public seriously uh, and offering solutions which will hopefully um, address the concerns they've raised. So what have, that have been raised on the later submissions by both Mr. Everington and Mr. Newman, um, and just clarify those points really. So. You can rest assured I won't be uh, boring you to death by regurgitating the written documentation that's already been submitted. Um, if I may just turn you to a number of pages within the agenda pack. So first of all, I just wanted to touch on the first objection by Mr Newman, which is at page three of your documentation. And there's just two points of clarification I wish to make. Uh, early on in the document, I think it's uh, the second paragraph, uh, he makes mention to uh, a closing time of 1.30. Uh, just for point of, of clarification, the terminal hour for licensable activities will be 1 a.m. and the closing time for the business will be 1.30. So there will, will be no music happening at 1.30, just to make that point very clear. And the other point I wish to point out, which is, uh, again, uh, on the first line of the third paragraph is the way that he describes his premises. And in this objection, he describes it as a place. So he's living to a, a living next door to a place. The reason I, I make this point is because the second additional document he puts in, which is on page 33 of your bundle, 
Um, unfortunately, it seems that the written submission that we've submitted seems to have inflamed and aggravated him somewhat because his language uh, and the content of the document seems quite uh, agitated, to say the least. Um, he describes the premises in his uh, most recent um, submission as a nightclub, uh, and that is repeated five times through one page of A4. And I just wanted to clarify things and put things into context with regards to this. So if I could just ask you to look at page 31 uh, within your agenda pack. Uh, page 31 is the layout plan of the premises. And um, basically the next few minutes will be just be about putting things into a certain context really. My aim will be to distinguish this premises very clearly from that of a nightclub. Our submission is that it is not a nightclub. Uh, but first of all, the layout plan will show you two means of escape, one at the front and one at the rear. Now, this will have uh, a certain limiting factor on the occupancy within this building. Uh, generally, the guidance says somewhere between 200 and 220 people can get out of uh, an exit of this width. Um, you always take one exit out in the, event of in the event of a fire, so they're left with one exit. You then have the floor factor uh, issues to cater for. And because of the fixed furniture, they will probably be limited at, at somewhere near one person for every square metre of floor space available, not including the seating and fixed arrangements. So our submission would be the, the occupancy, just to put things into context, will be somewhere around 200. So you can't expect that this will hold uh, you know, up to 500. It's just not going to happen. So I would suggest it'll be a very modest capacity of around 200. The other thing that I wanted to highlight was um, the definition of a nightclub. Now, there isn't one within the Licensing Act. We all have in our minds the vision of what a nightclub looks like, what it is, usually pay on the door, drinks, music available, etc. But the government in December of 2021 uh, and you'll all recall this, brought in the COVID-19 status checks. And here they brought in uh, certain categories of premises that they wanted these checks to apply to. They started off with um, discotheques and nightclubs as being the sort of starting point. But then they went on to say that other late night dance venues where the following apply. So there was four things that had to be present uh, in other late night dance venues. Number one, the premises is open between 1 a.m. and 5 a.m. Now, that isn't the case with this premises. The terminal hour is 1 a.m. at the latest at the weekends for alcohol and for entertainment, so it wouldn't tick that particular box. Um, alcohol is served after 1 a.m. Well, it isn't. Uh, alcohol will be uh, ceasing at 1 a.m. It has a dance floor or space for dancing. Well, we would concede it does. Uh, and the premises has music with a live or recording for dancing. Well, yes, it does. But that is only two out of the four criteria that would have been necessary for this premises, had it been licensed, to conduct these COVID status checks. So it wouldn't have fallen into that category. So our submission is with the, the small capacity that's probably going to be uh, present on this premises, coupled with the previous experience under the COVID-19 status checks, it wouldn't have been a premises that had fallen under that. So we would say that it is somewhat of a stretch to describe it as a nightclub. So I just wanted to also clarify that point, clarify that point and put it into context. There's obviously other things that the government asked for, which was premises where the events were indoors more than 500, but I won't exhaust uh, that list. I feel I've made my point. The other thing that Mr. Newman picks up on in his second objection is again, having more concerns around the soundproofing. If I just talk very briefly, and this was submitted uh, in the initial written uh, representations that we put in, that the design and the specification of the uh, noise attenuation works has been pulled together by a professional environmental health officer. It's an industry standard spec uh, that he's laid out. It's something that's not been made up on the back of a cigarette packet, that's for sure. Uh, and it's been pulled together by an expert. And incidentally, that um, specification has been passed by the planning department who have suggested they want it to happen in line with the spec, but that's all they've insisted. What we're saying as part of the operating schedule is we're going over and above that specification in that once it's been done uh, and the fit out is complete, there's then gonna be another assessment where Neil Martin, the author of the report will come back 
and ensure that the sound attenuation works are fit for purpose, uh, they work properly, uh, and with the permission of the objectors, we are more than happy to do the assessments from when any sensitive properties that they identify. We can only do that with the permission of uh, the residents, but we are open uh, and willing to work with them to do that at a convenient time for them. And then there's been an additional promise made that if there is the smallest of issue that needs rectifying, that will be rectified at the cost of this applicant. Now that is uh, a, an excellent uh, offer of reassurance to make sure this soundproofing of the building works, is installed correctly, uh, and has been checked uh, that it is fit for purpose. The later part of Mr Owen's second representation also touches on smoking. I'm not going to go into too much detail on that one, on this one, but I will be addressing it when I speak about Mr Etherington's objections. Um, the other parts that he mentions is his fear around how people are going to behave when they leave the premises and disperse from the area. Now, you'll probably know Highfield Road is quite a wide, broad location, quite close to Lytham Road. This particular premise is probably 40 metres away from the junction. On the corner of that junction of Lytham Road is the Farmer's Arms. That has an identical terminal hour to this particular application, so 1 a.m. at the weekends. It has a large outdoor space, which certainly won't be available at this premises. Um, but the beauty being, because it shuts at the same time, we're not going to see people emptying from Marvin's and going to a nearby premises because it's closed. Likewise, down the road, there's a similar premises of a similar foot, footprint now called Clementine's, formerly was called Winston's. Uh, again, identical terminal hour, so the alcohol stops at 1, the entertainment stops at 1. Incidentally, they've got a closing time of 2 a.m. But uh, again, there's not going to be the ability to spill out of Marvin's and go on to neighbouring premises. The whole area effectively closes. So they've got left with little option. And that is really to either walk home or to get a taxi. Now, there is no hackney carriage provision within the area, no immediate ranks outside the front. Indeed, that would probably be even worse for residents if there was Hackney Carries ranks. Uh, we know from experience that they sometimes can be uh, less than respectful with the way that they stand outside the vehicles and talk and shut the doors, etc. So we haven't got that issue to worry about. So we'll be pre pre predominantly looking at uh, transportation through private hire services. Again, with the technology and apps, they can phone those and have them available. And the other good thing regarding the dispersal, it can be done over half an hour, which is why we've chosen the closing time of 1.30. So the uh, tills close at one, that gives people half an hour to leave those premises. They're not gonna be rushed with the drinks. We can organize uh, facilities where taxis can draw in plenty of space, either outside the front of the building or across the road, or even encourage people down towards the Lytham Road area. So I think, we can't really offer much more in terms of reassurance around the dispersal. You'll always have doormen at the front. They're not going to be rushed out of the premises. There's nowhere else for them to go. So we feel the fears around how people will behave um, can't be managed any more than what they've been uh, offered to do so by the conditions uh, within the operating schedule. A pause for breath while we move on to the uh, objection of Mr. Everington. And again, I'm not going to regurgitate his first uh, objection because we've already passed comment on that within the written submission. But we're going to deal with uh, his second one, which is page one of your agenda, sir. <clears throat> okay, so. Um, the first comment really is um, Mr. Edrington was, you know, somewhat set back regarding the length of the documentation <clears throat> and the short time he had to prepare it. I mean, what I did was uh, moved in double quick time to get this in place as soon as possible. Um, submitting documentation seven days before a hearing is, is pretty good based upon my experience. Sometimes you're seeing lengthy documentation being submitted two days before, the day before, which does aggravate everyone. And I'm very mindful of that fact. So my intention is always to get things in early, to be as fair and as courteous as possible. So we, we definitely tried to do that with the timely submission of that written, written submission. Um, now, I'm un unable to comment on where Mr. Uh, Owen, I beg your pardon, what's his name, the first object? 
Mr. Newman, Mr. Owen Newman. I'm unable to comment where he lives. His address has been uh, redacted from his representations. I'm going to assume that he's possibly one of Mr. Everington's tenants, but I also uh, know that there's additional tenants mm -hmm. within that building up to six up to six, uh, six flats within the property. And it's of note that uh, we do only have one possible objective within the block. They've got the ability or have the ability to pass comment on this process. And we take a certain amount of confidence that there is only one of the individuals has raised concern, but that's not to diminish the concerns he raises, but it's a point I will feel is worth making for six potential tenants in there who could have objected but we're dealing with uh, one of those tenants plus uh, the owner of the property. Uh, again, just to reiterate the fact that we are no way diminishing that uh, issue and we are taking every matter that they've raised as serious as we can do. So on this one, um, the thing that I wanted to go into a little bit more detail was around the smoking. Um, obviously, Smoking has been banned within premises since the 1st of July 2006, I think it was, maybe 2007 uh, from memory. I think it was the Health Act 2006, came in 1st of July 2007. So it's been in, in place for some years and premises have had to battle with this issue uh, for some time. And it has had an impact in certain areas on nuisance. But I wanted again to put the issue of smoking into context and look primarily now, at what the average smoking rate is within the adult population. It's currently sitting at 13.5% nationally. Now, Blackpool, again, skews uh, the national figures slightly, uh, and, and we've got a figure of 21% of our adult population of smokers. Now, that has reduced since 2011, where it was 28%, but nevertheless, still higher than the national average. But as you all know, uh, members, there are three wards in Blackpool that tend to skew all the figures, whether they are crime, health related matters, and they are the three inner wards uh, within the Blackpool area. I won't mention them, you probably know them very well. So I'm going to uh, take a presumption that the sort of average base of uh, smokers within Mr. Huckabee's client base is going to be that of the national average of 13.5% of, of those will be smokers. Now, if we took a position of him being half full, which um, that could be as little as 100 people, that's 13 smokers potentially within that premises on any one night. It's unlikely uh, that all 13 will want to smoke at the same time, but we do accept that smokers generally gather in small groups. We would suggest that it'll be more like twos and threes. Uh, and we think that the door staff that will be posted at the front entrance will be adequately able to manage, manage smaller groups and that assessment's based upon statistics the capacity of the premises and i'm just trying to again put things in some sort of context as to the type and the level of problem that we could be facing and the conditions that we've offered we believe are suitable and appropriate to manage the risk that we believe could prevail again leaving the premises uh, will need transportation or walk into nearby addresses if they leave, live nearby. There should be no reason for them to hang around the area because there's no uh, facilities for them to be in the area any longer than they need to be. But we can only do so much with regards to the behaviour of people when they are away from the premises. I've touched on it in the written submission, what the government guidance says, matter for personal responsibility when they're away from the premises. It does highlight the issue of signage as being an appropriate measure. Now, I uh, absolutely accept what Mr. Everton is saying, and sometimes you believe that signs just get ignored by everyone. So that is not contested at all. But the signage issue will be uh, doubled up with strong supervision as well uh, on the front doors when people leave, and also a very graduated dispersal time of 30 minutes. So again, we feel uh, that this issue can be managed. Um, in short, Chair, we feel the uh, matters that have been put in within the uh, operating schedule, the pre-negotiation steps that Mr Huckabee has made with the responsible authorities, all of which have resulted in a fairly positive outcome for him because none of those have objected. So that should give yourself, and it certainly gives us, a certain amount of confidence that they believe in what he's promising will happen. Uh, we believe that all those measures really will have uh, little or no impact on the licensing objectives on discussion being undermined. 
Now, there's two objections under discussion primarily, and those being crime and disorder and the prevention of public nuisance. And as again, just to reiterate, we believe that the measures laid out and the steps and the way that this application has been approached, we believe that there'll be little or no harm to those objectives if the license is granted. I don't know where I, I am in terms of time. I guess yeah, I'm one, probably, one minute, sir. I'm probably knocking on the door of being almost up for time. So yeah, I'll just I'll just offer if Mr. Huckabee wishes to add or clarify anything at this point. I'll just sort of spin over. I don't think you. I've got anything really to add unless you've got questions um, to ask, really. Yeah, if the panel have any, any questions to ask, would they please do? So I've just covered uh, six of the areas and uh, you have answered all uh, of those six areas. One is about the, the place possibly being a nightclub type environment, the maximum numbers, the soundproofing, um, the fear of the behaviour uh, outside uh, on social behaviour. Um, there's similar properties around there. You've answered that one. And disruption from taxi ranks, as there are no taxi ranks. So... Um, and of course, the, uh, the termination time um, with, with, with the premises being um, at 1.30 when the premises will, will be closed. So um, as far as I'm concerned, the chair, I've got no more questions, no questions to ask. Uh, have any of the other councillors anything to ask? No, no questions from me, Danny. Thank you. Just a quick, a quick one. If you just clarify... Is there going to be a smoking area or will the smoking be on the street? Um, Councillor, there is no uh, land that they could utilise as a smoking area, so it would have to be uh, at the front of the premises. They have little or no option but to ask people to smoke outdoors. That is what the law says. So, unfortunately, yes, Councillor, it will be at a, an area uh, at the front of the premises, but that area will be under supervision. Uh, and it will be well managed directly by the door staff who are stood next to the smokers, effectively. And it's just that, as you know, most smokers tend to take over public properties. I'm uh, just curious as to what that was, just something to consider. All the other questions I was going to ask, you've already dealt with yeah. them. Could I, could I just add that in, in Polton, um, Brett Road, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but it's quite a narrow pavement. And what we do is sort of shield off a little area, and that's what the doorman control. Um, where we are on Highfield Road, it's much wider than Brett Road, and we're doing the same sort of sort of presence, if you will, with security controlling it. Yeah, you can understand it is a concern with a lot of premises that there's a lot of smokers stood outside of the door. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yes, sir, and that's why I picked up on the national smoking rate and the capacity of the premises, just to put things into context. Um, you know, not everyone, uh, you know, in the 60s and 70s and 80s, pretty much, you know, the smoking rates were much, much higher, perhaps 70 or 80 percent of the adult population. We're in different times now uh, where the national average is 13 percent. And also a smaller capacity venue means that, you know, less of those people are likely to uh, partake in smoking. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> Any more questions from the, the panel? No. Now, can we move on to the objective, please? And you, you want to be allowed... 20 minutes to uh, to reply. Uh, put your case forward. Thank you, sir. Hello there. Yeah, my hello. name is... Hello, uh, members of the panel. Uh, I don't think I could speak for 20 minutes, but uh, I'll just give it my best shot. As the owner of the property, and the property being directly adjoining this building, which is the same building, uh, I have massive concerns about the noise levels uh, because I know how noisy the premises was when the B&M bargain store was there. But that wasn't a problem to the tenants because this happened uh, during working time, uh, 8 o'clock in the morning till 6.30 in the evening. My whole crux of the problem is being that this is going to be open until late. Uh, late to me would be 11 o'clock in the evening, uh, but one o'clock gone would, would, would certainly be an absolute nightmare for these tenants. Now you mentioned that the tenants have not made complaints. They've all made complaints to me uh, but 
unfortunately, only Mr. Newman, who is a tenant in the property, has actually done it in the correct manner. Uh, the lady from flat one, which is directly below uh, what will be the smoking area, uh, Mrs. Miss Kelly Maunder has uh, sent an email in, which was a planning uh, email, uh, which wasn't accepted, was too late, wrong procedures. Again, people in the provinces have complained bitterly about it, all six of the people, and hopefully uh, we can get to a right conclusion uh, on this matter. Now, I'll, I'll just sort of read uh, my text message uh, or email that I sent because I'm not the best of talkers um, and the gentleman who's putting up the thing is a very good talker. Uh, yeah, and the landlord of the property, which shares the boundary wall of 1923 Highfield Road, which is adjoined by the premises. It's not adjacent to, it's not across the road, uh, it actually shares the same boundary wall. I have six tenants occupying the building. And they all, and as I say, have all clear concerns. I think it's a foregone conclusion through the planning. This is going to go ahead. But what I'm trying to 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 get it into the uh, at the licensing people, this is sure to be done on a staggered basis. Uh, basically. Uh, give the people an 11 o'clock licence and let's see how the property uh, manages itself for noise levels, uh, for disruption uh, and anything else that may be concerned. Because uh, to give a late licence, uh, it would be very difficult to reel that back. And I just think more of a, an earlier licence would be more appropriate. Um, in regard to the soundproofing, these people have said they're going to soundproof the, the building, but they're going to say that because they're going to be charging a lot of money for doing this. Whether, whether this works or not it, it is circumstance, uh, w whether it does or whether it doesn't. Uh, but for, for sure, the tenants uh, will be left uh, with the consequences if it doesn't. Uh, the tenants, um, already two of them have told me if this is going to go ahead, they will give their notice in. Um, it's going to be virtually a building where nobody wants to live. Uh, this building was built by my grandfather uh, almost 90 years ago. Um, it's always been in the family. Uh, we've always managed it. Uh, I am now the owner of the building. Um, and it's done very well. Um, and people there, for instance, Mr. Newman, he's been there 12 years. Uh, happy being there. Uh, the other tenants are all happy. I never have an empty flat. Uh, but I think if this happens, I'm going to do. Um, again, Regard this smoking thing, um, I, I've also been in the licensing trade, working as a door supervisor, uh, a management of a security company, uh, and I found uh, people, the later it goes, the more alcohol they consume, the more unreasonable they get. And asking people to leave premises in a quiet and orderly manner, uh, really, you're better off not saying anything because quite often that makes uh, a reaction of some people that you're not going to tell me what to do when I leave. But we're always going to get something like that. Uh, it, it's, it's just basically what I'm trying to say is, 
it's just a bad idea to have a late night license so close to these residents. And we're talking only meters away and probably 10 and not more than 20 meters away from people's living rooms, people's bedrooms. Uh, flat one, flat four are above Hunter's estate agents, which is the building next door. Um, you're not going to be able to have your window open. It's as simple as that. Uh, I have sent a video in uh, with the, showing how close this is. It, it, it's not as though it's 50 yards away. It's not as if it, it's the corner of another street. It's virtually not 10 metres away. Uh, it, it's, it's a really, really bad thing for these the people that live in this property. It's going to ruin their standard of life. Um, as, as I said before, Miss Maunder, who, who lives in the, the very nearest property, uh, she works as a care worker. Uh, her times are, are staggered. She's not going to be able to sleep uh, through a, a night, I'm sorry, we're not going to call it a nightclub, a late night drinking establishment. Uh, it, it's, I, I'm, I, I think I'm starting to ramble, but I'm sorry about that. Um, let me, let me just see if I can put some, some valid points up to you. I, I asked the question, has the applicant uh, dealt with premises with adjoining residential units? Uh, this, this is not across the road. This is not adjacent. This is adjoining too. It shares a party wall. It's the same building. It's it's going to be noisy. Uh, I know. I know. Um, I know they're going to get the license, um, but I really do think an eleven o'clock license would be more appropriate. Um, what, what, what more can I say? Um, I'll just see if I'm prompted by my, my friend here. <laughs> have, you, uh, have, you, have you completed your uh, statement, Mr. Ethan? I'm, I'm, I'm all but done, aren't I? Uh, it it, it sort, sort of has to be managed before a late night license is given. Uh, 11 o'clock would be far more suitable for the surrounding residents and certainly the pre residents of 3 Mayfield Avenue, which they are uh, live. Uh, and, and, this, and then an assessment should be, should be taken from there. Thanks. I'm sorry. That's OK, Mr. Heather. Thank you very much uh, for your time. Um, I've taken down some notes here of your concerns, which I shall be discussing um, at the end of this meeting with uh, the panel. I uh, just want to know, uh, any of, of the rest of the panel, any questions? Ask. Uh, Not for me, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. No, I think we'll take into account all that he said. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much, Councillor. Yeah, we will do that. Um, we have a quick summing up. Uh, we want to go back to the start, please, um, Mr. Huckabee. Would you like to sum up? Okay, sir. Just on the back of um, Mr. Edrington's uh, representations and what he said there, um, number one, the applicant is approaching this in the most open handed. Uh, and sensitive and professional way that he can. He wants to maintain harmony with the uh, neighbours. Uh, that is absolute. He's not riding some sort of bulldozer through uh, the area, trying to sort of force this down people's throats. He's been very um, uh, progressive in his approach, talking to residents, speaking to Mr. Reddington directly about it. Obviously, we're never going to make him entirely happy, and that's more than understandable, but we want to put that commitment out there that we will work with the residents uh, with whatever issues 
should the license be granted uh, come come around, uh, whether they be small or or major, but certainly any major issues uh, will be designed out uh, before the premises even open through the uh, measures that we've offered up. Um, in terms of some of the questions that he raised as well, has he got experience operating premises with adjoining or premises above? The answer is yes. Uh, Truth operated till 3 a.m. with residents above. Uh, he faced uh, vociferous objections on that particular application, uh, satisfied the council's requirements, put the noise measures in place and operated for a couple of years there, went out uh, of business on that particular venture through his own choice rather than being uh, you know, the victim of any sort of complaints or scrutiny from the local authority. Likewise, Marvin's at Polton and lived them all our residential properties above. The other uh, comment I would make is that Mr Huckabee's got uh, flats above this premises, which he intends for commercial use uh, once the premises is ready. Uh, and there's no way that he would want to hinder his ability to uh, make a commercial opportunity out of those flats. So everyone's interests align in making sure that this business uh, operates within the uh, requirements of the licence and objectives and does not cause a public nuisance. My summing up was already prepared uh, and it's around the assessment really that you as committee members will be making as to whether this application could be granted. Um, and I think it'll fall into three categories, low risk to the licence and objectives, medium risk or high risk. Now, there's two licensing objectives on the table, public safety, prevention of uh, public nuisance. Now, there's been one specific crime mentioned within uh, Mr. Efferington's uh, objections, and that being a breach of the peace. The control measures we're wrapping around that particular issue include door staff, train staff, strong door policies. Uh, incidentally, the police are content with the way that uh, this operating schedule has been uh, drafted and have not submitted uh, an objection. I'll just uh, ask the committee clerk to note the uh, guidance paragraph of 9.12 of the section 182 guidance, which talks about, you know, the faith that you should have in the expertise of your responsible authorities. With regards to prevention of public nuisance, three issues on the table, noise uh, from music within the premises, noise from smokers, noise from people coming and going. And again, we've got four control measures that I'm going to go through wrapped around each of one of those issues. So with regards to the noise from music within the premises, we've got an expert's report on the sound attenuation works required. There's gonna be expert contractors employed to install it to that specification. There's then going to be uh, the expert re-engaged to ensure the measures uh, are uh, effective. Uh, and if there is any issue, there is an undertaking from the applicant to make good any issues that may be disclosed and he will not operate until those uh, issues have been rectified. Uh, noise from smokers. I've already touched on the fact that it's going to be a modest capacity venue. Um, adequate supervision at the front of the premises. You've got an acoustic lobby, that being um, a, a second set of doors. So when they open, the second set of doors closes so the music doesn't spill out. The acoustic lobby has been designed into it as part of the noise measures and there'll be signs and supervision uh, at the entry and exit point. Noise from people coming and going, we've got a 30 minute dispersal time in which to sort of gradually get people out of the premises. Uh, there's ample uh, space for transport to pull up without causing a nuisance uh, in the vicinity. Um, and again, I'm just repeating myself here that the signs to uh, uh, respect the residents in the area. You've got to ask yourself uh, what the risk category, given the control measures on offer is. In my submission, it will be a risk uh, to the licensing objectives. And therefore, would I invite you to grant the license as uh, it has been applied for? There's also premises in the vicinity, very, very close vicinity, the farmer's arms with exactly the same terminal hours with much larger outdoor space. Uh, and just to sort of pick up on Mr. Everington's point, if we do have an earlier close, that could aggravate the issues that happen when people go onto neighbouring premises. When the, all the licence times in this area line up and with the geographical spread of the uh, premises, they're not closely bunched together. You've got Clementines, which is at number 74 Highfield Road. It's got to be two to 300 metres down the road and the Farmer's Arms about 40 metres away. There isn't that density of premises to 
uh, cause the issues in our respectful submission. So just to reiterate, we feel that given the uh, measures offered within the operating schedule, the confidence that's been offered by the fact the police and responsible authorities have not objected, we feel that this application is low risk. We feel it's something you can grant with some confidence uh, and you can also have confidence in the operator, as do the responsible uh, authorities do. But he understands the ramifications is what he's offering. He's offering conditions of a license, which if he breaches are a criminal offence. And it's no small uh, punishment attached to Section 136 of the Licensing Act. It carries a term of imprisonment in the, in the worst circumstances. He understands that, he's an experienced offer, operator, and he's offered these as conditions. They're not flimsy promises made by someone who's not got experience in the uh, industry. They are promises he's willing to stand by, which carry a legal sanction if he breaches. He's an experienced operator running premises of a similar style and type where there's been residential property both above and adjoining, and he's done it successfully in the past. So that's my closing submission, Chair. Thank you very much for listening to me today. Well, thank you very much for that, um, very succinct. Um, what we'll do now, uh, unless there's any questions, any further questions from the panel? Chair, Chair could I just ask Mr Marshall a question just yes. about one of the conditions? Mr Marshall, the condition at the bottom of page 20, the very final one, which refers to the noise assessment work and a report being obtained. I mean, yeah. you'd be addressing, you sort of said in your, your submission that obviously that will be done prior to the premises opening. I presume you'd have no objections if the committee were minded to impose, amend the conditions so that it, it made it clear that this report was to be undertaken prior to opening and that the recommendations be acted upon Certainly, that is my understanding of the yeah. condition anyway, but if you need the wording clarifying to think, make that happen... It doesn't all... actually say that, does it? it just says a report will be obtained. Well, no, it doesn't say when it should be done, so uh, I think... More than happy to produce anything uh, and show those actions have been signed off as well. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, we're going, to, we're going to close the meeting down now and discuss this, and we will inform you of the outcome. Um, if uh, the legal advisor would like to explain the process for that, please. Yes, Chair. I, I'll, I will, once you make, reach your decision, I will draft the reasons for that on your behalf. Uh, they'll be sent out. It'll either be done today or tomorrow because I'm on leave next week, so it will be emailed out to all parties. Um, I said probably tomorrow, but maybe maybe this afternoon, depending on how how quickly uh, I get them done. Oh, okay. Well, thank you very much. If we can just close the meeting down and we will come to the decision and let you... Mr. Renner, you might have a question. Yes, yeah, could I just say, say it's just something final, please? Yes, you may. Yes. Uh, number one, I think 11 o'clock license would be more appropriate. Then it will give you a chance to conservatively manage the situation, both noise and how the place is going to be run in reality. In other words, assess, evaluate before a late license is given. It mentions in other premises. Now, my understanding in uh, the premises mentioned, Truth, uh, Clementines, uh, these other places, they don't have uh, tenants above them. Uh, this has tenants above. Uh, we, again, anyway, we, we, the, the, it's such a, such close proximity. This, this is what the, the whole thing is. It's such a close proximity. Uh, I, I mean, I mean it, it, it's the same, really. If, if you if you live somewhere, and would you really want a late night bar opening in the semi-detached house next to you? You wouldn't. Um, as I say, I did send a video in, and I did did show how close uh, th these flats are to this thing. This is what it's all about: the close proximity. Uh, I know there's a lot of legal jangle going on uh, about noise and decibels and all the rest of it, but really, it's all down to a bad place for a, a late bar. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Everton. Okay. 
So if we can just close down and uh, come to the decision. Uh, thank you all for joining in, please, and uh, your uh, input. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. I'll just stop the broadcast. Thank you. <laughs>